Okay, hello everybody. I am Ian, and as you've seen in the title, I am here to share my AP Art portfolios, both of them. I took AP Art in my junior year and in my senior year, and I did the drawing portfolio and the 2D design portfolio. So honestly, I'm making this video because when I was preparing slash in AP Art, I watched every single video on youtube.com of people going through their portfolios. And I used to think to myself when watching these videos, gee, if I get a five on my portfolio, I wanna make one too. So here I am doing that for you today. I am not a YouTuber by any means and I am not used to talking to the camera. So this is very weird, but I'm gonna push through. I'm gonna get it done. So that's basically it, I guess. Okay, so my first portfolio. <laughs> So in my junior year, I took AP Art, I did the drawing portfolio. This was in the 2019 to 2020 school year. If you watch any videos of people's portfolios from before this school year, it's probably a little different. During my school year was the first year that there were changes. They completely axed the breadth, they upped the concentration to 15 pieces and they renamed it Sustained Investigation and then they renamed the five quality pieces to Selected Works. And so this portfolio of 15 to 20 pieces is what we were all working towards during the school year. And then in March, uh, something happened. A little known thing, kind of like this weird virus started getting spread. You may not have heard of it. Don't be afraid of Cornova. Because of coronavirus, we all got sent home in March. Basically, they took our sustained investigation and it went from 15 pieces to 10 pieces, and they took the selected works and it went from five pieces to three pieces. This is because obviously, if students are stuck at home, they can't get resources to make art. It just doesn't make sense to still require all of the students to submit everything. I personally think that this change benefited me because I was able to kind of narrow down all of my work and only submit the best of the best. So before I show you the pictures, first I'm gonna read you my writing sample and I'm not gonna read you the whole thing, but I am gonna read you my guiding question. So this is what I wrote. My sustained investigation focuses on the question, how can mental illness manifest physically and how can that be represented artistically? So basically the idea is mental illness, things like anxiety, OCD, depression, ADHD, they are all in your head obviously, but they have very real consequences, physically consequences to your body. They can cause you to have certain behaviors. They can cause certain side effects, really. And so I wanted to explore these through my art. So throughout making this portfolio, I decided to make each piece represent a different physical effect of a mental illness. So piece number one is this thing. This piece is supposed to represent a migraine. I like it. I think it's nice. The composition isn't revolutionary. <laughs> it's just a bust in the center of nothingness, but I still like how it looks visually. I did this in oil paint sticks on just like white paper and took me probably about three or four classes, so like four hours. So this next piece is one of the last ones that I did. This is what it looks like. I cut these off when I submitted the picture. This is supposed to be claustrophobia. This piece is one that I did at home once we had all been sent home for COVID or Cornova. We are frightened of Cornova. During the school year, I had to get really used to drawing myself because College Board is serious about plagiarism and about where you get your reference photos from. And so, at least in my class, I don't know if all classes do this, we just all had to take our own reference photos. And when you're at home, isolated for Cornova. Cornova. The only person you have is yourself and your family members. If you're wondering why I didn't do the rest of my face, there's no meaning behind that. I just didn't want to do my face. <laughs> and this was done in black Prismacolor colored pencil. Number three is this painting. It's actually my friend, shout out Tessa. So this piece is supposed to represent lightheadedness. It's acrylic on canvas board. I think I did this one over winter break, so I didn't even do it in class. I totally did not mean to make her pink. I thought I was just doing skin tone and then eventually I looked back and I was like, she's Princess Bubblegum, but it's okay. Piece number four is this one. This is supposed to represent paralysis. We have the marionettes holding the hands and it's kind of like, you know, you're being controlled by whatever this gloved person is doing. This is my own arms that I did for reference, of course. Not my favorite, the fingers look like sausages 
but I like the overall vibe of it, so it's okay. This next piece is more of a cautionary tale, and the tale is don't try to use spray fixative on chalk because it ends up looking like this. For reference, this is what the actual piece looked like. And it was a very good thing that I got a picture of it because 30 minutes later, I tried to spray it with a sealant and it ended up kind of ruining it. Yeah, I don't wanna talk about it, but <laughs> no, I'll talk about it. So this piece was supposed to represent numbness and the feeling of slipping away, not feeling your face, things like that. I think this was the second piece that I did chronologically, but I put it in the middle of my portfolio. Piece number six is this. This piece is supposed to represent confusion. This one was a journey. The composition was wacky at first. I mean, it's still kind of weird, but I had this whole like doorway on the left side and it was much bigger and it was a whole thing. But actually, it's really grown on me for some reason. I really, really like the blindfold and it's surreal and that's what confusion is. Number seven is this bad boy. So this one is to show trouble breathing or constricted breathing. The story behind that is in the supply closet in our art room at my school, there was a full-sized skeleton named Terry, shout out. And one day to take a reference image, I propped my phone up, hugged Terry from behind, and I grabbed his rib cage and I took a photo on a timer and I just printed it with graphite. I really like this one. This is one of my favorites from this series. It's hard to get on camera because it's graphite. Here's a tip, don't do full graphite because it's the worst to photograph. <laughs> That's kind of a joke, but it's just a mess to take a picture of. The last piece of art that I have in this portfolio is another full graphite piece. It is this. So this piece is meant to show exhaustion or extreme tiredness. This piece actually is the one that I did the fastest. I did it in two class periods, but they were back to back. So it was just like a three hour stint of me doing this. I took the picture of myself once again in the supply closet of the art room and I did it with these really big graphite sticks. Just thought it was a good closer because it's just kind of like putting your head down, closing the book, that's that. So you may be wondering, that was only eight pieces. What about the other two that you had to submit for the 10 in your sustained investigation? The other two spots were reserved for my progress pages. In the sustained investigation, they tell you that not all of your images have to be their own pieces. You can have progress pictures, you can have journal entries, you can have anything that shows that you were investigating. What my class did, because I had a great teacher, shout out Ms. Collins, she had us do these progress pages throughout the year, so that way at the end of the year we had a lot of just writings and evidence that we were actually investigating. So the thing is, however, I had a lot of progress pages by the end of the year. So what I ended up doing was taking eight, eight progress pages, and putting them into groups of four, and then putting those pictures in my investigation. So this is the first investigative journal. You can kind of see I like glued stuff in, I taped stuff in, I wrote stuff out. And this was just the beginning. So I wrote down what I was doing for my sustained investigation, how I was going to do it. This is another one. I have pictures of pieces in progress, changes that I made to them, things like that. I almost forgot to show you the selected works. So the first piece that I put in my selected works is this little itty bitty painting of a bookshelf. I took this picture at a thrift store and then I painted it with acrylic on a board. Not much to say, it's just still life. The second piece is from my sustained investigation and it's the rib cage. I just really love this piece. I think that it was a good piece to include. The third piece that I put in my selected works is the last piece that I did at all for this portfolio, and it is this eyeball. I like it. I did it in marker and then colored pencil over top. It's just a picture of my own eye that I took myself. Yeah, that's all. So those were my 10 images that I submitted and got my score back, and it was a five. I felt great. This is so much talking. This has been 25 minutes. Okay, next up. Okay, so now we're on to portfolio number two. In general, I think that doing APR a second time was easier than the first time. Having already gotten a five, I felt like I kind of knew what they wanted and I had like a template to just fill in again, but this time with new art. However, I will say it was completely different doing art from home and during COVID because my inspiration was much lower. So I was kind of just doing whatever I wanted to. 
So this year, they didn't reduce the number of pieces. We all knew what we were getting into. Cornova was still happening. So I still had to submit 15 pictures for my sustained investigation and five for the select works. One important thing to remember is that I didn't have to mail in any of these pieces for both years, but in the future, you may have to submit things in person. So now, like I did with the first one, I'm going to read you my guiding question. So this is what I wrote. My sustained investigation focuses on the question, how can humanity slash the human form be abstracted slash redesigned to depict the intersection between the human world and design world. I am inspired by how people are influenced by design in their lives, and I aimed to create visual landscapes that express humanity with a repeating motif of an abstracted person or body. So if you're wondering, Ian, that doesn't make any sense. You're correct. This is a really kind of confusingly worded statement because honestly, my whole investigation was kind of confusing. I did a lot of pieces that were related, but it was hard to describe what I was basing them on. And so this is what I came up with. Basically all of my pieces ended up having some sort of abstract design element, but they also still had some sort of insert of a person. So this was the best way that I could describe it. Basically the things to take away from this are the intersection between the human world and the design world and a repeating motif of an abstracted person. So number one is this piece. This is acrylic paint on like canvas paper. Personally, I don't really like this that much. <laughs> I like the concept, but execution wise, it looks a little dull to me. The left shoulder is way too bright. I don't know what I was doing there, but I don't hate it. Next up is this piece, which is acrylic paint again on more canvas, but it's like floppy this time. I like this piece. I think that it portrays a good blend of what I was talking about, which is there's a person, there's humanity in this, but it's still a different abstract landscape that isn't rooted in reality. And yeah, overall, I think it's fine. I'm trying to go quicker because this is taking so long. So number three is actually still in my sketchbook and it is this. I did this with marker and then I outlined with color pencil over top. Some of the pieces in this portfolio are pieces that I did in one night in a couple of hours. Some of these were just quick one-off things that I did and then I really liked and really thought would fit into this portfolio and so I included them. And this is one of those. Just a person walking in some random walkway, doorway thing. They have a reflection. It doesn't really have much personal meaning, but I actually do like this. Number four is this piece. This was kind of a struggle. I'm still not in love with it, but I included it because I thought it gave an experimental moment. This is just acrylic paint on canvas paper. You can see here that I tried something at first and I didn't like it, and so I did this instead on the back. Yeah, it's just a bust of a mannequin, and then I kind of did this imprinting process. I actually like this one, but I was hesitant to include it because I didn't know if it was gonna be to everybody's taste. Number five is back in the sketchbook, and it is this piece. This piece is actually a sketchbook drawing that my art teacher gave me a prompt for. The prompt was on a bus, plane, or train. I had no idea what to do for this. <laughs> and then I eventually came up with this bus, and then of course I had to add a little person in there. And this person is what made this fit in my portfolio. Okay, so number six is this piece. This is, I don't really know. <laughs> this is actually another one that I did in one night. It is done with these acrylic paint sticks on just white paper. I wanted this kind of ghost person who looks a little bit sad, and I wanted the rest of the scene to be childlike. I did this little house, this little like bird thing, energy beam flying into him. It doesn't really mean anything in particular, but I like how it looks. I think that that's the thing about my second portfolio. I didn't make it with the intention for everybody to like it. With my first portfolio, I was like, okay, what do the graders want? What's gonna look the best? What is, you know, gonna get me the highest score? And the second time around, I kind of just did whatever I wanted. <laughs> Number seven is this calendar thing. I wanted to do a calendar just to communicate some sort of stuck in time feeling, lost time feeling. I did this in acrylic paint sticks again on white paper. I guess that's it for this one. So number eight is this piece. This is a picture of me and my friend. I painted us, but I took away the faces, of course, to kind of give it that mysterious quality. And I put us in this abstract designed scene with colors and with random stuff going on and lines and highlights. And this is acrylic on canvas paper. Number nine is another one in a similar style, and it is this one. This is acrylic on canvas. This one is taken from a picture of me actually that I just took, I think the day that I made it. It's definitely one of the more abstract pieces on here because like you can't necessarily tell what's going on, but I think that you can still tell that there's a person and then that still communicates 
the mix of humanity and design. I just have to be honest. Piece number 10 is the piece that took me the least amount of time. I like it. I do like it. But I did it in probably about an hour. Basically, the idea behind this one is that I was doing a series of three pieces. They all had this geometric shape going on. They all had some sort of person in it. I ended up using this in this portfolio because it works for it. It's still an abstracted person and it's still in this design world. Even though it took the least amount of time and I thought the least about it, I think that it was a good thing to include. Okay, so number 11 is actually hanging on my wall right now, so I'm not going to take it down to show you. I'll just put the picture up. This piece is one that I really like. I just put some legs up in here and I put some shapes behind it and I called it a day, but I actually really like it. And I think that the simplicity is a strength about it. This was acrylic on canvas and it's about, it's the size of this. So there's that much. So this is the last actual art piece in my sustained investigation. The last three images I included were progress pages like with my first one. There's some paper on it because it is delicate. It is this piece. So this is white charcoal and white chalk on black paper. I really like this one. I actually used this design in an older piece, this right here, and I kind of reworked it into what this is now. So now for the last three images, these were my progress pages. I have to say, for my progress pages the second time around, I did a lot less work than my first time around, and I think it paid off the same, so it was much less stressful. The first one that I included was this inspiration piece. It's just what inspires me, how it inspires me, and why it inspires me. I added some pictures of like artists that kind of inspired me through the process. The next one I did was an investigation check-in, so this was kind of the halfway through point where I talk again about how my investigation's going, and I included pieces that I had already completed, and I added a little number 10 because I had done 10 pieces up to that point. And then the last one is the findings, so the conclusion. I talked about how it was to finish the investigation, and I added more pictures of finished pieces, and that was that. So that is the whole second sustained investigation. And now, lastly, I'm going to show you my selected works. And I used two pieces from my sustained investigation in my selected works. The first one is the isometric black and white person in the room one. And then the second one is the legs that are up on my wall right now. I thought that they showed the widest range of my 2D skills from my sustained investigation. The next piece that I included in my selected works is a realism piece. So I did these sugar wafers. This was actually for the other art class that I was taking at the same time, but I figured that it would be good to include. This is colored pencil on gray paper and it took me forever. And I really like this one. The fourth one that I put in my select works is this piece that I did specifically for them. It is this. It's kind of this like lava lamp, colorful, saturated shape thing. This was just kind of to show them a fully abstract piece. Not much to say, otherwise I like it. I think it's pretty. So the last piece that I will be showing you today is the last piece in my selected works and it is this. Once again, this is in full graphite. This was another piece that I did for the other art class that I was taking at the time. The concept was shattered and I did this face man being shattered in three different directions. I personally really love this one, so yeah. Okay, so that took a very long time. But that is both of my portfolios. They're honestly pretty different. I still really like both of them and I am proud of them. So that's all that I have for you guys. Overall, I enjoyed taking APR twice and I guess that's it. I hope you like this video. Follow me on Instagram because I'm not really on YouTube. Like Instagram is the only place that I am active on. So follow me there and otherwise, I will see you who knows when. Peace out. We are here, out in the field.